Welcome to St. Simon's Parish on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the Gospel today, we are reminded that as followers of Christ, we are called to serve without counting the cost, without expecting rewards, and without personal gain. Jesus, the Son of God, emptied himself to be a servant for all. May we as church adopt a more inclusive, compassionate attitude to share God's love with all. Please stand as we welcome our celebrant, Father Kevin, as we sing our opening hymn. tuned in for Mass. I'm Father Kevin Dillon, Parish Priest of St Simon's in Roval. Normally I'm dressed a little differently from this, but I'm actually in the hospital for the <laughs> second time in the month, but I'm still okay and coming good from a very troublesome ulcer. I'm very grateful to people for their prayers to uh, get me along. Hopefully I'll be out mid of next week and back to normal ASAP. In the meantime, I just take this opportunity to say Thank you to all the crew back at St Simon's who've kept the uh, online masses going, which I have, <laughs> have in fact been watching myself on a regular ba or daily basis. But especially I'd like to thank Oblate Priest, Father Paddy Moroni, who's a long-term friend of mine, but doing an absolutely splendid job. He was principal at Mazenod College for many years, but a wonderful man and a great and very committed priest. He'll be looking after the Sunday mass next week, so I'll be having a week off, even if I'm home. But for this week, we've got a bit of a hybrid. We've got bits and pieces of last year's Mass for the 29th Sunday. But we're getting there, and we'd like you to be part of this. This will be sort of patched together, a bit of last year, a bit of this year. Who knows? Hopefully it will come out well and be of, of help to you. I'm on the mend, getting there bit by bit, and very grateful for the wonderful care I've received at two extraordinarily magnificent hospitals, Mulgrave Private 
and uh, now I'm in St John of God in Geelong for a little while, having had a spell at home and then a bit of a downturn. <laughs> Circumstances brought me back to, uh, to Geelong for a, a week or so. God bless you all, and uh, I'll be seeing you at the Gospel time in a few moments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome to you all, people watching this on the website in different places and situations, I suppose, and at different times. People who are listening to this Mass on 89.9 The Light, our extended congregation that we've had for quite some years, are always a very important part of our Mass from St Simon's each week. And a very small handful of us, not even a handful really, actually in the church, in order that we can present this Mass to you. But we hope it's something which can give you a sense of engagement with the Lord, renewing and strengthening of faith, and maybe a bit of consolation in these difficult times which we're all struggling through in different ways. And through the week I've heard many distressed stories of people who are really finding it very difficult in the ongoing restrictions and limitations that we have so lots of things to pray about, lots of things to think about and ask the Lord's help and strength. And let's ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, may we always join our will to yours, and may we serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, Prophet Isaiah teaches that through his suffering, the servant of Yahweh will justify many. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life. And through him, what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response today, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. 
The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. In the second reading, St. Paul highlights that Jesus is the High Priest who sympathizes with our weaknesses. A reading from a letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a High Priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please welcome the gospel today with the acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for all. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. To you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favour. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptised with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I must drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. When the other 10 heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not sure about you, but I have always enjoyed some of those movies that concentrate on turning back time bit like the, uh, what was that, Cher song, wasn't it, If I Could Turn Back Time? Movies like, well, Back to the Future was an obvious one, of going back and going forward and so on. One that I particularly enjoyed was a movie called The Final Countdown, which uh, somehow a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the US Nimitz, got caught up in the time warp, whatever that is, and uh, ends up back in 1941, just when Japanese planes are heading towards Pearl Harbor. So what did they do? Did they shoot down the planes and stop World War II in terms of the US-Japanese conflict? Or do they let things go on their way? Great movie. It's still around, I think, if you can if you watch it. But yeah, if we could turn back time or look into the future, people want to particularly look back into the future, of course, get the winner of the next race, whatever, whatever it might happen to be. And we've got a gospel today which is very interesting because it is a, a look into the future. It's about James and John and their future and their mother's wish for them, wanting them to be in the place at the right and the left hand of Jesus, in the place of honour. It's a fascinating little story. It's about a mother 
Mrs Zebedee, mother of James and John, wanting her boys to be in the best possible situation. And it takes into account that whole notion of looking into the future and our sense of ambition. Where do we want to be in the future? Now, ambition's an unusual word. It's, it can be a good word in terms of what we want to do. It's best for ourselves. It can be a very ugly and dirty word where people want to seek a position for their own sense of uh, well power and pride and pushing themselves around or obviously for wealth and that sort of thing. So what do we aim for? What do we try to be? And how much do we need to see ourselves into the future? People often say, you know, where do you see yourself in five years time, 10 years time? And that's very interesting at the moment because imagine just two years ago, if you said to any of us, where do you see yourself in five years time? Well, we wouldn't have seen ourselves where we are at the moment with lockdowns and all sorts of economic crises and vaccinations and who can do this and who can do that. No way could we have anticipated this This would be the case. So it's a, it's a bit of a reminder to us of something tremendously important. And that is the importance, while the past is important and we learn from it, and the future is important because as best we can, dare I say, we plan for it. But what is most important is something which really within the context of ambition, this is James and John, you know, looking towards the future, maybe a bit too far, of the importance of the here and now, of the things that we can do in the present and the difference that we can make to our own lives and those of others right here and now, not too far into the future and not living in the past, but in the here and now and what we can be to one another and how we can support and care for one another. That's what Jesus is talking about. Quite some years ago, when I was ordained a priest in 1969, early in parishes in the 1970s, there was a sort of a buzz thing that was talked about then about the sacrament of the present moment, it was called. And it was, it was good. It was something which recognised the importance of what we're doing today. Don't plan too far into the future. We mightn't get there. Don't live in the past. And that sacrament of the present moment is just so important. And where we see James and John looking ahead into the future and this place on the right and the left, and Jesus says, oh, oh boys, are you sure you know what you're asking for? Of course, it was pointed out to me by a priest who was very good in Hebrew many years ago. I didn't know Hebrew whatsoever in my time in the seminary. I was taught it, but I didn't learn anything. But he said, in the words that are used, those words were only used in the New Testament one other time. And that's about the thieves that are crucified on either side of Jesus, one on the right, one on the left. So this position that the mother of James and John wants for her boys is one that for which a price has to be paid. And that's all the more reason why we look towards not too much into the future, not too much into the past, but very much into today. What we can do today. Who would have ever thought, as I said earlier, that we would be in the situation we're in at the moment just a couple of years ago. The world has changed and we're not quite sure if it's ever going to go back where it was. In the meantime, the idea of the sacrament of the present moment has very much to commend it and to do what we can, when we can and where we can. And we ask God's grace to help us to do that. So <laughs> this is my best effort to put together a little homily for the day's mass. If it's a bit disjointed, it's because it's had to be done in two minute grabs because that's all my iPhone will manage to transmit. God bless you all and hope to see you on our YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. God bless. Bye. Let's now stand. And if you're sitting at home, you can still remain <laughs> sitting at home, force of habit, and we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So now we come confidently asking God to hear the prayers of our heart. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they will be freed of ambition and devote themselves in selfless service to the good of community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that today's International Day for the eradication of poverty will bring renewed efforts to share the world's resources justly with those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for young people struggling with mental health issues, that they will find the personal companionship and professional help they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for public health workers engaging with culturally diverse communities, that they will help them respond effectively to the COVID challenge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who care for them. We pray for those who have died recently. We also pray for Rosemary Johans, Eileen Crowley, Noel and Franz de Argent, Margaret Whittle, Tyrone Jantz, and all whose memory we keep sacred at this time. May God welcome them into the eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these prayers together with those deep within our hearts with confidence in the name of Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. I missed you this morning. And water. He came to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us, so please, the sacrifice we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, grant us a sincere respect for your gifts. Through the purifying action of your grace, may we be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that, through sin, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, 
we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, as best we can, wherever we are, whoever we're with, we offer each other a sign of peace and friendship in Christ.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer links us with the mystery of the Eucharist and that central expression of faith that the reception of Holy Communion sacramentally and as we do now spiritually is such a marvelous expression of what we believe of the presence of God in our life my Jesus I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, grant that by benefiting through our participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and be prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So hopefully in the week that it is ahead, you'll receive many blessings. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.